Hello, Graham Roberts here. Well, what we're going to be doing in this session is creating a celestial object. We're going to call it a celestial body. And the aim is to create a class that will have components such that it can model, hopefully, the real world, the sun, the star at the center of our solar system. So the solar system is depicted here and we can see that the sun is at the center as it were and orbiting around it are eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So they're the planets, and the most outer planet is Neptune, the most inner planet is Mercury. Now, some of these planets have moons. Uh, the Earth, I believe, has one moon, and Jupiter has uh, 95, no, sorry, has four moons, uh, 95 moons, that's right, yes. So anyway, we can do research on this and build up a knowledge of a solar system and then try and model that in Java. But it's all going to start just as the solar system does start and is founded on the sun. It's going to start with the celestial body that is the star. But all of the planets are actually um, made from material that the sun was originally made from, we think. So therefore, we can say that a planet is a celestial body. And we can say that gas giants like Jupiter, Saturn, are planets. Now this hierarchy can help us because in Java we can use inheritance. We can use the extends keyword. So we can make it so that the celestial body is extended by a planet and the planet uh, is used to extend a gas giant. Anyway, that's where we're going to go. But we start with the celestial body, the celestial object that is the sun, which is at the center of our solar system. And there it is. Right, well, let's go to uh, Blue Jay. And Blue Jay is going to uh, be built up from scratch. At the moment, we're looking at a package called Celestial Bodies, but it, we're going to create a new package. So let's do that. So a project, a new project, and we're going to call it uh, Celestial Body uh, Created from Scratch using BlueJay not bothering about capitalization or what have you just do that and it's in my folder called playtime on my drive G I could choose a different folder so do that and I'll get rid of the previous blue J and push that up okay so we've got nothing at the moment really of any use so let's start with our first class the new class what we're going to call it Yes, you guessed it. We're going to call it Celestial Body. We're not going to call it Celestial Object because it's not really an object in Java until it goes into memory. It starts off as a class. So I could say Celestial Class, but then it's going to be called Class, Celestial Class. It's a bit redundant. So I'm just going to say it's called Celestial Body and the other planets uh, and gas giants will be Celestial Bodies. Um, with extra uh, benefits 
as it were, properties. So the class is the default, so we don't need to worry about the abstract class, although we could have made this an abstract class, actually. Um, and an interface, unit test, uh, if we were looking at trying to create a picture, a circle that represented the sun, which is, of course, in itself, in its reality, a sphere, we would have used JavaFX class. But we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to have an ordinary class. So there we go. And our ordinary class has got this. So first of all, I'm going to put my name in it. I'm just going to put my, my initials. I'm going to put the date into it. Um, November the 3rd, 2024. I'm going to put that in there. Uh, this is not what I want. I don't want the X and I don't want the sample method. So I'll get rid of that and I don't want this. So now I've got the what we call a default constructor or the zero um, construct, constructor because there's no arguments in the parentheses there, no parameters to be sent to celestial body. And of course, nothing is returned from celestial body, uh, unlike in a method where there is, is a return type. Uh, it may be void, but there will be a return type of some kind because what it's going to do is construct, instantiate a celestial body object using the new keyword somewhere. Perhaps on the bench, we'll do that. Right, at the moment, we got really nothing. There's nothing in here. Let's, um, let's just say we're going to create the sun, right? Well, the name is going to be sun, right? That's going to be a string. I'm not going to use capitals. Sun, right. Uh, now, if I compile that, we can see that there is a problem. Java doesn't know what we're talking about. It's saying well, 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 it should be a string. Now, it should be able to work out that it's a string, but it's playing stupid. So we have to comply and tell it it's a type string. However, this is not a good idea because I'm creating what's called a local variable inside the constructor. And that's not really what they're for. They're really for taking an instance variable which should be declared here and instantiating them. So not a good idea putting a local description here. So the name's all right. We can leave name in there. In fact, what we're really saying is it's this dot name, this class is name, but it won't know what we're talking about because we haven't declared it. So let's declare it and uh, we put up here um, name, um, there we go, name, I've declared it. I haven't given it a value, but we shouldn't give it a value because it should be given a value in a constructor. So uh, what's wrong? Well, it doesn't know what type it is. So we're going to tell it it's the type of string. Is it going to be happy now? Yes, but hopefully you're not happy because you're noticing that we have not given any access specifier to this. Now the actual access is what they call private package or package private, meaning that this is a private variable, but it's private within the package, and that is within the folder that um, is known as playtime. So that's, uh, that's pretty broad. In fact, it's more or less public, isn't it? That's not good for information hiding security or encapsulation. In fact, it's atrocious. So we're going to put in here the explicit keyword of private because now it's only accessible within this class. We've created a problem, of course, because if it's only accessible in this class, it means we have to have a getter for this. So let's put in a getter. We need to get name and it's going to be returned. So what's going to be returned? It's going to return uh, the name, right? It's going to return that. 
instance variable called name is going to return what is in it. Well, if it's going to return it, then the function needs to actually have a type addressed to it because again, Java will be saying it doesn't know what we're talking about, even though it could deduce it uh, from the information it's been given. So uh, now we are returning get name from this method if it's invoked and uh, if it's called we'll get back whatever uh, this name is well actually we know the name is going to be sun okay what else do we need well um that's a pretty good thing to go on Let, let's have a look at the bench that is let's have a look at the workbench so we're going to create a new celestial body i just don't care what it's called call it that the default and we look on this and look by clicking right on it we can see that is a string get name what does that do it returns sun that's what we expected now let's do another another look and we're inspect and what we see is that uh the celestial body has got the private string name sun which is again what we expected okay so hopefully you're following that and uh, now we come back to this and we say, do you know what? I think, I think that um, actually we're going to also have a mass of um, a sun. The sun is going to have a mass. Now, what, what kind of um, measure of mass would we have? Well, kilograms seems okay. I know a kilogram is quite a small uh, unit of weight or mass, but, uh, well, we're going to use kilograms. I've made my mind up. So we're going to use uh, kilograms here. So let's put a little notice in there uh, that we're talking kilograms here. And uh, we really need to have not an int type because... Um, let's face it, whatever the weight of the sun is, or mass of the sun, it's going to be a fraction. That is, it's going to have a real number. It's going to have a fractional part. So we're going to call this a double. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I think we need a getter for that, don't we? So we we'll just copy and paste this. And put that in and say get mass but of course what's going to be returned is now a double it's not going to be uh, a string as before and we're going to return mass I'm going to go to edit and auto layout just so it looks a bit neater okay right so we've we've done that uh, we now need to think about the sun being a sphere. It literally has a sphere of influence uh, on us. It's uh, called gravity, but it has a sphere of influence because it's a sphere. So that means as a sphere, it will actually have a diameter. Yes, it will. It will have a diameter. And so we can say... We want a diameter, and we're going to say that the diameter is in kilometers. And if it's in kilometers, we also want to use the double type for that because it's like 60, uh, say 60 million point six kilometers, whatever. Uh, what we need a getter for that so we'll put that in the reason we need getters remember is because the instance variables are private and can only be seen inside the class so if we want to reference what's inside the class from outside of the class we really do need to have a getter if we are instantiating uh, the celestial body as an object 
we will probably do that outside of the class. Now, I'm not going to do it outside of the class in this case, but we would normally do it outside of the class um, because that's the nature of such things. Right, so we're going to have diameter here, and we're going to return the diameter. It's, it's a double, so there's nothing to say about that. Uh, right, diameter there. Let's check on the compile. Okay, so now we've got three instance variables, and we've got three getters for one for each of those. When we set the celestial body, we didn't set the um, mass. Now, I'm going to set the mass of the sun as, uh, let's say, uh, one million, exactly one million uh, kilograms. And the diameter we're going to set as uh, 500,000 kilometers. Right, so this is really just a dummy anyway. So if I compile that and make sure my spelling is correct, then when we go to bench this, as it's called, we can actually now get the values of these. We can get the diameter, there we go. We can get the mass and we can get the name. So no real surprises there. How did that happen? Well, when this bench was created with this object on it, it executed the constructor here. Well, that's fine and good, but actually what we want to do is create a non-default constructor. We want to actually be able to dictate what the celestial body will be from the call to the celestial body to instantiate the object. That is, we want to give it the information at the time. We might not want to have the sun as celestial body. We want to, might want to have something else as a celestial body. Uh, maybe we do another solar system one day. Anyway, what we're going to do is create a non-default constructor. Right, well, let's um, create it like so. There's the non-default constructor. And when we are using this, we can, at the time, give it um, meaningful values for the instance that we want. Let's go back to the bench. And this time I'm going to go for this one, right? So the celestial body name is going to be, uh, let's call it Sol this time. And its mass, I'm just going to put in a, a token. Right, just tokens really. And again, we can see that it's, actually worked the non-default customized constructor has worked we have much more variation uh, than before using this methodology the next thing we really want to do is to create a way of seeing what's in our celestial body object. 
by printing it out on the screen. Well, well interesting. What can we do? Well, we can create a new method. Um, let's put it down here called display info. And what it will do is, well, display the information. Let's see that working. We're going to go for the default this time, just because it saves me work, and just see if that display info works. This is what we've been doing all this time. And uh, because we're recording in the terminal window, see these are our options. We're recording what's going on um, as we try different things. But what we can see is that the default object is returning what we expected. So the display information method is working. So we can get rid of that and come back into our text, our source code. OK, now, what we're going to do is make sure that we can um, use this class, instantiate this class. As I say, normally classes are instantiated from without. Um, perhaps in a main class with a main method. Um, in this particular case, I'm just going to put in a main method. And here we have it. So it's static because it has to be, it has to be able to be in existence from the beginning of the program to the end of the program. It can't just pop up and go away because this is going to be in effect the program. And every Java program has a main method somewhere which starts everything off. This happens to be in this particular class. So this will make the class into an object. We start with celestial body because that is the name of the class that we want to make into an object. We use a keyword, sorry, not a keyword, we use a name of sun and we instantiate the constructor, in this case the non-default constructor, using the new keyword. So when this happens, there will be an object called celestial, uh, sorry, a sun object. And that sun object can be used to display the information by exercising or invoking its display info method. Notice the dot here links the method to the object. Similarly, up here, we had name linked to the object that would be itself the celestial body. So we had that, but we don't really need that. It's just it was useful at the time to show that. Let's get rid of that just to identify that we don't really need to do that. Now, I say that, but let's try a compile. And what we see is it works OK. However, it might be the case that this name equals name is a bit odd to your mind, in which case what some people do, if they don't put the this specifier in to make it more clear to us, uh, we can put in something like this, a name, a mass, and a diameter. I have to say, this seems to be a fairly modern way of doing this. Um, so now we just say a name, a mass, and a diameter here. 
right, this is what I would call a nuance. Um, it's neither here nor there because it works the same either way, but it can explain what's going on a little bit if we uh, use a different name for the argument than for the instance variable inside the class when we are assigning a value in the constructor. Okay, so will all of this work? Yes, it will. And if we um, close this, come back to here and execute the void main option, we get uh, we get the execution of that, which is that the sun is 1.989 raised to power of 30 kilograms, which is very big, and also that the diameter of the sun is actually 1 over 1 million kilometers. <laughs> All right, so that worked, and we can see a history of what we've been doing here. We have created this object from scratch. And uh, that may be helpful. I hope it is helpful to you.